Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll start talking to you about views. Any SharePoint list or library has the ability to show views, except actually for the OneDrive documents document library. That's the exception that doesn't have that capability. But otherwise, all of them do. And you'll find the views here. And as you will notice here, this documents library only has one view, which is called all documents. And you can modify that view or you can create new views. So for example, if I want to create a view that only displays the invoices from 2010, I can of course filter based on those two properties. Previously, I've created these list columns in this document library. So that's why I have these values and I can filter it on them. So you could call this dynamic filtering, which is it's of course a capability of all SharePoint views, but you can also have a permanent filtering or a permanent view, which is what I'm going to create now. And I'll find the ability to create views here under the little ellipsis here, and create view, or up here on the library tab where there's a big button called create view. And I can also actually create views down here under the library settings. This is my favorite spot really in SharePoint. There's so much stuff in here. And here are the views list and here I can of course create a view too. And so I do that, create a view and then I get this option I to select base type of my view. Should it be displayed as a data sheet? Should it be displayed as a calendar or a Gantt or a custom view in SharePoint Designer? That one is um, rather obsolete. It doesn't really apply much in SharePoint 2013. So I'll start with the view type standard here. I can also start from an existing view, the all documents here, but I'll start with a standard view. And this dialog here, the create view dialog that comes up, is very rich. It has a lot of functionality. I have the columns to the left right there, where I can select which columns are displayed, the sorting, the filtering, the tabular view option, which is just a checkbox, the group by, which is this part, so I can make group views, I'll show that later. The totals, which is really powerful, you can count based on the values in the documents. The style, which uh, can have some interesting display options for your view. The folders, if you're going to show items inside folders. As you probably heard before, I don't recommend using folders at all, but these are the options there. The item limit, that is how many items you want to have in each page before you go on to the next one. And then you have the mobile view also, how many items to display in the mobile view. So I'm going to do a view now called 2010, which is just going to show the items that are from the year 2010. So in this case, I'll filter. I will not show all items. I will show only the items that have the year. There we go, year is equal to, and I'll just type in 2010 there. Um, and then I will just press OK. Actually, this is such a long dialogue, so I have an OK button at the top too. So they do the same thing, of course. And as you see now, the all documents here, and then I have the 2010 view, which is just showing the 2010 documents. Important to note is that this view is actually an ASPX page. So I can go ahead and copy the shortcut. I can uh, open that in a new window. I can, you know, send it in a, an IM message or all that. Let's see, open a new tab. So this is a, a page of its own. So I can customize that page also. So the whole concept of creating new views is actually creating new pages in the SharePoint site that you're working in also. So that's an important concept to remember. So that concludes my quick introduction to SharePoint views. Thank you for watching this demonstration.